Hi uh, guys, it's been a while. How have you been doing? Hope you are good. So this is a quick one. So I've been on the ward since morning and um, okay currently I'm rotating through the labor ward and since morning we've been monitoring different labor and um, plotting the photograph and um, I've seen a lot of things today um, so I'm just here to tell you some of the conditions I've seen today and the very most important one is what we call pre eclampsia pre eclampsia is a very common condition that we see in pregnant women and it can be so severe that it can lead to convulsion so that's why we take it very serious in ONG so what's preeclampsia? Preeclampsia can be defined as an idiopathic progressive multisystemic disorder that characterized by an elevated blood pressure of more than or equal to 140 90 millimeter of of mercury checks on two different occasions six hours apart with significant protein urea in a previously pneumotensive and non-protein neuric patient that is above 20 weeks of pregnancy so it's usually diagnosed when the woman's blood pressure is way above or equal to 140 19 millimeter of mercury and when on deep stick we see two pluses of two plus of protein in urine two plus and above and when we do um a 24 hours urine test you see 300 gram of protein in the so risk factors or predisposing factors to appearing cancer include the following number one previous history one thing they've made us know, know in ong is that previous history is very very important because it says a lot and actually says that oh this person that i risk of having this same condition again in our next pregnancy so watch out here yeah. so previous history of pre cancer number two primary gravidity yeah pre cancer is very common common in women that are carrying their first pregnancy because they are not used to this new logical change so they are there's high risk of um, being pre-eclamptic other in other risk factors include diabetes mellitus those other factors also include molar pregnancy yeah molar pregnancy a very important risk Factor. Then other factors also include APLA syndrome, also known as the antiphospholipid syndrome, is also a risk factor. Another risk factor includes multiple gestation, and another one includes new paternity black. So other risk factors include extreme reproductive age, black race, history in the in the family, as well as new paternity factor. Then, as I said earlier on, preeclampsia could be mild. It can be mild and severe. It's said to be mild when the blood pressure is above or equal to one for two over 90 millimeter of, of mercury, but not more than 160, 110 millimeter of mercury checked on two different occasions six hours apart and it's said to be severe when the blood pressure is greater than or equal to 161 10 millimeter of of mercury on two different occasions six hours apart or when the blood pressure is more than or equal to 118 120 millimeter of, of mercury on one reading okay just to round it up um, if preeclampsia is not diagnosed early enough, if it's not well managed, it can progress to a more severe form, which is known as eclampsia. Yeah, and when it comes to eclampsia, it involves the brain. And in this case, the woman tends to have a sudden onset of tonic clonic convulsion, like without a cause, without a medical or own neural cause and can actually lead to the death of the mother and the child so that's why we have to take brain cancer very serious and that's why they advise pregnant women to always check their blood pressure and to always do a urine test so how do we manage eclampsia? and as i said earlier on they tend to present with conversion so the very first thing is to stabilize the patient the, the aim of this 
management is to um, abort the conversion and the way we do this is by giving magnesium sulfates yeah magnesium sulfates by making use of the Pritchard's regimen so what is the Pritchard's regimen it's actually a way by which we give magnesium sulfates we have different regimen um, i can remember the common one which is the Pritchard's regimen zeus palm then we also we also have what we call the sokoto regimen yeah when I heard of it, I was like, Sokoto. It was named after a study that was done in Sokoto State. So I'll tell you more about it. So the Preacher's Regimen, when we give a loading dose of um, 14 grams of max of, of max of 4 grams is given um, IV for 10 to 15 minutes, while the other 10 grams is given as 5 grams on each one of the things um, I've noticed is that when they give pregnancy to women magnesium sulfate, they tend to feel hot easily. Like they have this inner heat. Like they keep saying they are hot, they are sweating. I see, like they feel something is burning in them. That's one way to know that all oh, magnesium sulfate is already working. Yeah. So then, um, okay, about the Sokoto regimen, okay, as I said earlier on, it was named that because of the study that was done in, in Sokoto state and in this case, instead of you giving a maintenance dose, you just give the loading dose without the maintenance dose and it was found that both of these actually work well, it has the same effect. Okay, when you give magnesium sulfate, please Try to check out what side effects and some of the side effects includes slurring of speech, loss of muscle tone, then um, respiratory rates can go down like less than 12 cycles per minute and the worst thing of all is that it can lead to cardiac arrest. So you should try to watch out for this side effect. If you see any one of it, you should try to give an antidote and the antidote for magnesium sulfate is cashew document yeah so if you should give that it will you know, try to it will erase all the side effect of magnesium sulfate so i believe i've been able to say something about preeclampsia and eclampsia so you guys can always go back online to know more about it so the next time guys don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel and share this with your friends.